Hi, and welcome to Interesting Nature Facts with Colby Farnham, PhD. I am Dr. Colby Farnham, PhD, and today we're going to learn a little bit about nature's most interesting, majestic, and elegant predator, the tree. Welcome to Nature Facts with Colby Farnham. He's a very interesting guy, Colby Farnham. He fought a whale and lived to tell the tale. And maybe one day he'll find a werewolf. There are many different classifications of trees, and the classification is actually quite simple. A tree taller than a man will simply be known as a tall tree. There can also be short trees, but these are commonly known as bushes or shrubbery. They tend to congregate beside sidewalks, and this is where they are most likely to be found. It could take a day, a week, or up to a year for a bush to evolve into a tree. Now, when you look closely at the tree, I bet the first thing that you'd notice is the hardened outside of the tree. Since the tree carries its shell on the outside, that makes it an exothermic creature, like an insect, uh, like an ant. <laughs> now, I know this sounds frightening, but it really isn't. The tree has a skeleton that you can touch. Now, when you see a tree guardian, also known as a squirrel, try and catch it, like this. Follow me. I think I see one right over here. Maybe back over here? Well, where the f- This is a squirrel. If you see one, try and catch it. Trees try to gather as many of these as they can before the winter to survive the harsh cold of the coming months. It will consume them. As a bonus, when you find a squirrel, it may lead you to its secret stash of acorns, which can be sold for a great deal of money. Now finally and most importantly is the main way a tree will eat. If you've ever tried digging a hole near a tree or a, come on, or a pit or a trench or a well or a place to store your bodies, you've likely come across these long rubbery tubes. These long rubbery tubes. Now these go under the tree and they're called roots. They serve to pull in water and sunlight to perform a series of chemical reactions to feed the tree called photoprocessing. Now, if you've ever looked up near a tree, I'm sure you've seen the other way that the tree feeds, not through the naive bird which roosts and will suffer the same fate as the stupid squirrel, but through these long arms that protrude through the top of the tree. These are called air roots. Uh, it comes from a Native American word, a root, meaning a root that grows in the air. These serve almost the exact same purpose as the below ground roots. Except if you notice, these have many leafy green objects on them. These are called leaves, and they serve as the tree's babies. The way the tree can lure in and consume squirrels and birds is quite frightening, and I don't mean to alarm you, but trees can also target infants. Now, trees don't normally consume infants. Rather, they mistake the movement of the infant for the movement of a squirrel or a bird, much like a shark. If you're now frightened of the tree, I have some more bad news. The brain of the tree has not yet been located by modern science. The secret is said to have died out with the natural predator of the tree long ago, the Native American. A good place to live if you're afraid of trees is in the city. It is not known if the trees don't grow in the city because of the tough soil or if they're simply afraid of minorities. It should also be noted that Frank lives in the city and he is a jerk ass. Frank is not my real dad. If you want to avoid Frank, you should also not live in the city. That's a risk I take every day. I hope today has been informative. I'm Colby Farnham, PhD, and this has been your interesting nature fact. Now come on, let's go get some lemonade. Welcome to Nature Facts with Colby Farnham. He's a very interesting guy, Colby Farnham. He fought a whale and lived to tell the tale. And maybe one day he'll find a werewolf.